Hi everyone, today we're doing another informational video because that is what I love to do on this channel. I like to help you learn some new things. Possibly you're looking at this channel because you're thinking about getting guinea pigs or you just got them. Doing your research before you get a pet is always best, but hey, if you're here and you just got your guinea pigs, that's awesome too. Or even if you've had piggies for a while, maybe you'll learn something here as well. Now, a site that I love and you can absolutely trust for quality information is Guinea Links. The link will be down below. You can look on there for absolutely everything and you can know that it is trusted information. On the internet, you have to be careful where you're looking. So today we're talking about health checks for guinea pigs. Health checks are so important. Guinea pigs are illness prone animals. They are prey animals, which means they hide their illness from you for as long as they possibly can. So it's really good to stay on top of everything that's going on with them so that if you do pick up something wrong, you can get them to a vet right away. So number one, have an exotic vet lined up. You need to have one. Guinea pigs, as I said, are illness prone and they need a specialty vet to look after them. Dogs and cat vets are not going to be able to look after them properly, you need somebody who is qualified for small animals like guinea pigs. So next thing, if you haven't done so already, pick yourself up one of these bad boys. This is a kitchen weigh scale. You need to weigh your guinea pigs once a week, the same time. So let's say you pick Friday at 6 o'clock at night, that's when you weigh them every week. It might take you about two or three weeks to get like a steady weight so that you know what is normal for them. Guinea pigs often will have the first sign of anything being wrong with them will be that their weight is down because that's something they can't hide from us. So if your guinea pig is always weighing at a thousand grams and then one night you weigh them and they're at 950, that is a red alarm that something is the matter and they should go to the vet because if you have no reason why they should have lost weight, like you haven't changed their diet, they haven't been getting more exercise, then you need to take them to the vet so that they can find out what is going on. So you get your scale, you do that once a week, it's super quick and easy. And you can find these scales in the kitchen aisles at like a Walmart, a superstore, a hardware store. They're not very expensive, usually about $15 to $20 maximum, but you're going to use it every week and it's going to save your guinea pig's life because you need to know when they're losing weight. So along with that, get yourself a little notebook. This one I did on cafepress.ca. This is my guinea pig, pig weights, diets, and medication book. This is where I record down everybody's weight. If anybody's on a medication, it's put in here. If anybody has a specific thing for their diet, it's put in here. That is great to know because sometimes it's hard to remember, obviously, right? What your guinea pig weighed last week. You want to make sure you remember. And as for medications, this is great if somebody else is looking after your guinea pigs while you're away. They're going to know what medications they get at what time and how much. So always get yourself a little book started. Now for guinea pigs, you need to check on them at least twice a day. They are pigs that... You they are pigs. Yes, they are. They are animals that cannot be left alone for a whole day or a whole night. They need to have people checking on them. If you checked on them in the morning and then didn't look at them again until the next morning, you could actually have found a guinea pig who has passed away because that is how fast things can happen with pigs. They could have got stuck in a hay bag or in a tunnel or something crazy like that and struggled and actually passed away from it during that time. They could have, once you checked on them in the morning, they could have after all of a sudden started having breathing problems. And again, you gotta act so fast that by the morning, they could already be passed away. So never ever leave your guinea pigs without their checks. Really, if you're having piggies, you should be checking on them way more because you should be really into them. But I'm saying if you're going out for a night, you're leaving in the morning and you're going to be gone all night and not back till the next morning, you need somebody to come in and check on them a couple times while you are gone. That is a must. So what we're checking for is just to see that they're acting normal. It's really good to get to know your guinea pig's personalities, what they're like, what's normal for them, because often that's another thing you can pick up first is somebody might be acting a little bit off. 
An example would be when Hobbs had his stroke. First thing in the morning, I turn on their light and everybody comes running to the front of their cage because they know they're going to get their veggies, they're going to get tidied up. When I went in the room that morning, everybody was out except for Hobbs. And right away I got this sick feeling in my stomach because that doesn't happen. So I went right over to his cage and saw that he was still in bed. And I was like, okay, what's the matter, little buddy? So he came out and then that's when I noticed that he was stumbling, his eyes were rolling, and he was like all messed up. So that's a really good thing to know what they're like because you can like instantly be like, okay, something's the matter because they're not being the same as they are every day. So that's one thing. The next thing is I don't have a real piggy with me because everybody's sleeping and I don't like to bug them when they're sleeping. So first thing you're always going to check for your pig is A, are they acting how they usually do? You're going to check both of their eyes. Guinea pigs are notorious for getting eye injuries. As you can see with my little fake guinea pig, their eyes do protrude on either side. That is very natural for them. If you have a guinea pig with a sunken in eye, there's a very good chance they have something stuck in their eye or they have had an eye injury. Both of which you need to take them to the vet so that they can get that corrected. Eye injuries are very painful and if you leave them you could run the chance of their eye rupturing, going blind, a whole bunch of things. So their eyes should be always clear if they're clouded. Again, that's a sign of an eye injury. If they've got crust in the corners of their eye or one of their eyes sealed with crusties, that is not normal. That is often a sign that they have an upper respiratory tract infection. So again, if something's off with their eyes, they need to be checked by a vet. Next, you would check their nose. Their nose should be nice and pink or whatever color their nose is, not having discharge, not having crusties, and no scabs. Again, if there's discharge and crusties, that's a sign of an upper respiratory infection. If they have scabs on their nose and their mouth, that's something called, I believe you pronounce it like chelitis, which is something they would need cream for. Or that could mean they've gotten a fight with their cage mate and they got bit around their mouth. Again, take them to the vet. You'll notice there's a common theme. If something's wrong, you take them to a vet. Next, you need to check their ears. Make sure there's nothing stuck in their ears, that their ears aren't all crusty or scabby up here. Now for furry pigs, they have a lot of natural hairs that cover their ears and help that so that things don't fall into the ears. Skinny pigs do not. And also having hair on their ears keeps them naturally moisturized just from their natural skin oils. Skinny pigs don't have that. So for the skinny pigs, I have coconut oil on hand at all times and I often will warm some up between my fingers and just lightly put it on their ears because some of them, not all, will get a little bit of dry skin there and that just really helps and it's something that's safe. Next thing you check your piggy for is their front teeth. We cannot see their molars, but their front teeth can give us a warning if we should be worried about their back molars. They have two on top and two on the bottom. They should meet perfectly. If they're meeting on a slant, then that is a sign that their back molars are having problems which needs to be dealt with right away. They should never be slanted. And also you need to make sure that they're not chipped or that one isn't missing. If they're chipped or one, isn't miss or one is missing, you need to assess why. Is there something dangerous in their cage? Did they fall off a ramp? Did they fall off a platform? Are they chewing the bars? Do they have a cage that's too small so they're bored and they're chewing the bars? Are they next to another guinea pig that they can't get at but is driving them nuts so they're like choo 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 choo? If you have piggies that are side by side that don't get along together but you still want to house them side by side but they're chewing the bars constantly putting a thing of plexiglass between that is a good idea I've had pigs who would chew 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 and that is terrible for their teeth and their mentality so putting plexiglass there is a great idea so anyway if you notice something off with their teeth they should go to the vet because you cannot check their back molars they're so far back there if something's off with the front ones those back ones are probably causing them some trouble. That is why we feed hay 24-7 to try to prevent teeth issues. And also if they have teeth issues, it could be your diet is insufficient in vitamins and minerals, so that's something to have assessed as well. 
Next, we're going to feel our guinea pigs all over just very gently. Do we feel any lumps or bumps? Guinea pigs are an animal that often can have cysts, which can be nothing too serious if they're not growing and not rupturing. Or they could have some fatty lumps, which again, as they get older, could be nothing serious. But if you feel lumps and bumps, should be checked out by your vet so they can tell you if that is something serious or not. Kelvin, it would be great if I had him here, but he's snoozing. He had a cyst here on his back that ruptured. That was two years ago. He got it removed because there's a chance that it would get infected and it just looks terrible and he was irritated. Now he has one up here that we're going to get removed as well because now it's starting to open up. For a whole year it was fine and just now it's starting to get yucky so we don't want him to have an infection so we're going to get that removed. The lumps aren't cancerous so they're nothing scary like that but since they're starting to open up they need to be taken off. Sometimes you can feel lumps on your guinea pigs and that could be cancerous especially if you're feeling lumps on a female down on their belly where their nipples are. Say their nipples look swollen or bleeding or crusty and they've got lumps down there. That can often mean they have uterine cancer tumors which is something you would need to get taken care of by the vet really quickly. So also when we're checking their body, we're checking to make sure their fur looks nice. Is there any clumps coming out? Is there bald patches? Another thing for female, if they're getting bald patches on their side, that could be ovarian cysts as well. So that's something that needs to get looked at by the vet, which you would need your guinea pig to be spayed to get rid of all the cancer in their uterus. So. Do they have scabs on their skin? Are they scratching themselves? If they have bald patches, scabs, hair falling out, stuff that looks like dandruff, they could very, very easily have mites, which can be common in guinea pigs. They could have lice, some kind of parasite that again, they need to see the vet for to get proper medication because something like that would drive you absolutely nuts. It's super stressful on the piggy and it can result in death when it's so treatable. That's something very upsetting. Next we're going to do, we're going to gently hold our piggy, take a look at their foot pads. Foot pads should be nice and they, they should look like our palm pads. They shouldn't be scabby, they shouldn't be flaky or dry, they shouldn't have wounds or sores on them. If your piggy has a bit of dry feet, I highly recommend going to Gorgeous Guineas and purchasing the Perfect Paws or the F&M ointment. All you would do is put a little dab on each of their foot pads maybe once a day just to keep them hydrated. If their feet are really dry or they're starting to get a bit red, you need to assess about your cage conditions. Perhaps there's an area in your cage that needs to be spot cleaned more. Maybe they're standing in their pee too much. So if you have bedding Maybe under where their house is, is getting too wet too often and you need to tidy that up a bit more. If you're using fleece, are you using it properly? Do you have an absorbent layer underneath? Because you cannot just use any fabric. You can't use just fabric. If you're using fleece, you need to use it properly or else sore feet is something that can happen very easily. So if you have a little touch of sore feet, you need to assess why. Now guinea pigs who have swollen feet open wounds, that is bumblefoot and that is a serious condition that you need to go to the vet for because they're going to need antibiotics, foot soaks and bumblefoot is common from people who keep animals on wire bottom cages which I have no idea why people do that or people who have very dirty cages, very unsanitary cages so if your guinea pig has bumblefoot that is super serious. Okay so also we're checking their nails Guinea pigs need their nails clipped on a regular basis. What I use here is a nail file, human nail clippers, or for Seymour, I use these bit bigger ones because his nails are a lot thicker. Now something people t tell me, or they used to all the time, is that human nail cl clippers aren't safe to use, that they just crush the guinea pig's nails. If you're buying new nail clippers of any kind, they're going to be sharp and they're going to work just fine never had a problem and all the piggies have nice nails it, it's if you were using doll ones that are just going to crush the nails so human nail clippers are perfectly fine you need to use whatever you can see well with that you can control well 
And I always file down their back nails after I clip them, especially because the skinny...